Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. This section shows production process of a concrete pump from steel plate to final assembly. The journey begins with raw steel plates in an unmanned fabrication shop. Advanced robotic systems handle the cutting and shaping of these plates into required components. Post fabrication, the cut steel pieces move to an automatic sorting system. Here. Automated conveyors and sorting arms categorize and organize the components based on size, shape, and function. This ensures that each piece is correctly routed to the next stage of production without manual intervention. The sorted components enter an automated welding shop. Robotic welding arms equipped with sensors and machine learning capabilities perform precise and consistent welds. This stage is crucial for ensuring the structural integrity of the concrete pump's frame and components. Next, the welded structures and other parts go to an unmanned CNC machining center. Here, Computer Numerical Control CNC, Machines meticulously mill, drill, and refine each part to exact specifications. After machining, the components are transferred to an intelligent paint shop. Automated systems clean, prime, and paint each piece using robotic arms that ensure uniform coverage and adherence to quality standards. Finally, the painted components arrive at the assembly line. Here, Automated guided vehicles, AGVs, and robotic arms assist in the assembly of the concrete pump. This highly automated and intelligent production process minimizes human error, maximizes efficiency, and ensures high-quality output for concrete pump manufacturing. Manufacturing at this factory today embodies the speed and precision required in a fast-paced world. The latest excavators feature state-of-the-art pumps, valves, undercarriage, and drivetrain systems, all integrated with advanced electrical systems. This includes sophisticated camera systems and linkage position sensing systems, creating a unified, highly efficient platform. A significant innovation in the manufacturing process is the creation of a universal column platform. This standardization means that whether the machine is produced in India, China, or North America, the components are identical. This approach streamlines production and enhances parts availability, reducing downtime for customers and increasing their satisfaction. These machines are designed with future advancements in mind, similar to smart devices. They feature sensors and cameras that support functionalities yet to be imagined. One groundbreaking feature is remote flash capability, which allows updates and new features to be added to machines in real time, without needing dealer support on site. This innovation is a first in the industry. Modularity is key to the design, facilitating easier upgrades and modifications. This modularity ensures the machines remain state of the art by allowing continuous enhancements through software and hardware updates. Quality assurance is a complex process that starts from suppliers and includes rigorous testing and confirmation. There is flexibility to make changes late into the manufacturing process, ensuring that new attachments and features can be seamlessly integrated. After approximately three years of planning and construction, Dutz Far inaugurated Europe's most modern tractor plant in the Bavarian city of Lauingen. This state-of-the-art facility is dedicated to manufacturing the 6-series, 7-series, 8-series, and 9-series tractors, serving a global market with high-quality agricultural machinery. The new plant, which represents an overall investment of 90 million euros, is a benchmark in modern tractor production. It employs cutting-edge technology across various stages of the manufacturing process. In the assembly area, advanced robotics and automation systems streamline production, ensuring precision and consistency. The painting section utilizes the latest techniques to provide durable and aesthetically pleasing finishes, while also being environmentally friendly.
Quality assurance is a key focus at the Lowing in plant. Comprehensive testing protocols for hydraulics, electronics, and chassis are in place to maintain the highest standards. These rigorous tests ensure that each tractor meets the stringent performance and reliability criteria that company is known for. The plant's design emphasizes efficiency and productivity. Lean manufacturing principles are integrated throughout the facility, reducing waste and optimizing resource use. This approach not only enhances production capacity but also minimizes environmental impact, aligning with sustainable manufacturing practices. High-quality production of semi-trailers often necessitates the use of laser-cutting technology to directly cut steel plates into precise arched shapes. This method significantly reduces damage to the steel and enhances cutting accuracy. However, the investment cost for laser-cutting equipment is substantial, running into millions of dollars. In contrast, general trailer factories typically use plasma cutting, which costs only hundreds of thousands of dollars but compromises on precision and may damage the steel during the flame correction process. One of the largest semi-trailer manufacturers in China stands out by investing in several laser cutting machines, despite the high costs. These machines are strategically deployed across different factory units, ensuring that each steel plate is cut with the utmost precision and minimal damage. Every semi-trailer produced by this factory benefits from the enhanced strength and durability provided by laser cutting. The precise cuts and reduced material stress contribute to a more robust and reliable product. By prioritizing quality and accuracy through significant investment in cutting-edge technology, the factory guarantees that each trailer offers the best value, making them some of the strongest and toughest on the market. One of the critical components of the trailer manufacturing is the welding of the main beam, which is the structural backbone of a trailer. The main beam must be powerful constructed to bear the weight and stress of cargo during transit. Here, we delve into the detailed steps involved in the main beam welding process. Material selection and preparation. The first step in welding the main beam involves selecting the appropriate materials. Typically, high-strength steel is chosen for its durability and load-bearing capacity. The steel plates are inspected for any defects and then cut into precise shapes and sizes using automated cutting machines. The edges of the steel plates are beveled to create a V-groove, which allows for deeper penetration of the weld and stronger joints. Assembly of the main beam components. Once the steel plates are prepared, they are assembled into the main beam structure. This assembly process requires accurate alignment of the components to ensure the beam is straight and true. Fixtures and clamps are often used to hold the pieces in place during this stage. The accuracy of the assembly is crucial, as any misalignment can lead to structural weaknesses and potential failures. Tack welding. Tack welding involves creating small, temporary welds to hold the assembled parts together before the final welding. These tack welds ensure that the components remain in the correct position and alignment during the welding process. Proper tack welding is essential to prevent any movement or distortion of the parts, which can compromise the integrity of the main beam.
Main Beam Welding The main welding process involves joining the assembled components permanently using either manual or automated welding techniques. The most common welding methods used are gas metal arc welding, GMAW, or submerged arc welding, SAW, chosen for their efficiency and strength. Gas metal arc welding, GMAW, also known as MIG welding, this method uses a continuous wire feed as the electrode and an inert or semi-inert gas to shield the weld from contamination. GMAW is versatile and suitable for various thicknesses of steel, providing strong and consistent welds. Submerged Arc Welding saw. This method involves forming an arc between a continuously fed electrode and a workpiece, submerged under a layer of flux. The flux protects the molten weld pool from atmospheric contamination and helps produce deep penetration welds, which are essential for thick steel plates used in main beams. Inspection and Quality Control After welding, the main beam undergoes a series of inspections to ensure the quality and integrity of the welds. Non-destructive testing methods, such as ultrasonic testing or radiographic testing, are commonly used to detect any internal flaws or defects that may not be visible to the naked eye. These tests ensure that the welds meet the required standards and specifications. Stress relief and finishing. The welding process can induce significant residual stresses in the main beam, which may affect its performance and longevity. To alleviate these stresses, the beam is subjected to a stress relief process, often involving controlled heating and cooling cycles. After stress relief, the beam is cleaned and any surface imperfections are corrected to ensure a smooth and finished appearance. Final assembly and integration. Once the main beam is complete and inspected, it is integrated with other structural components of the trailer, such as cross members, side rails, and suspension brackets. The entire assembly is then subjected to further inspections and tests to ensure the trailer meets all safety and performance standards. In a semi-trailer factory, the production line is a symphony of precision and expertise, especially when it comes to frame welding. This stage is crucial as it forms the backbone of the trailer structure. Every detail matters, and the technicians involved in the process are meticulous, 
ensuring that each weld is perfect. Technicians start with the careful assembly of high-strength steel components, aligning them precisely to form the trailer frame. Tack welding is employed initially to hold these components in place, preventing any movement during the main welding process. The technicians then proceed to the main welding phase, using advanced welding techniques like gas metal arc welding GMAW, or submerged arc welding saw. These methods ensure deep penetration and robust welds, vital for the frame's durability. Attention to detail is paramount. Every welding point is inspected for quality, and reinforcing plates are skillfully added to enhance the frame's strength. The technician's dedication and skill ensure that each trailer frame not only meets but exceeds industry standards. Professional semi-trailer workers are placing and welding the floorboards onto the frame of flatbed semi-trailers. The floorboard of semi-trailers such as flatbed semi-trailer, low-bed semi-trailer, sidewall semi-trailer, and fence semi-trailer should be selected according to the type of goods the trailer is carrying. Innovative factories have revolutionized the manufacturing of semi-trailers and the mass production of shipping containers by incorporating advanced welding robotic arms. These robotic systems perform welding tasks with exceptional precision and efficiency, significantly enhancing production quality and speed. The use of robotic arms ensures consistent and accurate welds, reducing the likelihood of human error and increasing the overall durability and reliability of the final products. Additionally, these automated systems streamline the manufacturing process, allowing for higher production volumes and faster turnaround times. By leveraging cutting-edge technology, these factories are able to maintain competitive advantages in the market, meeting the high demand for durable and reliable transportation solutions. The integration of advanced robotics not only improves operational efficiency but also sets new standards in the manufacturing industry for quality and performance. Excavators are marvels of modern engineering, providing significant benefits across various industries. Their versatility, power, and efficiency make them indispensable tools for construction, mining, agriculture, and more. In this article, we will delve into the amazing benefits of excavators, highlighting specific numbers that showcase their capabilities. Enhanced Productivity and Efficiency One of the most significant benefits of excavators is their ability to enhance productivity and efficiency on job sites. Modern excavators can move large amounts of earth quickly, thanks to their powerful engines and advanced hydraulics. For instance, a medium-sized excavator with an operating weight of around 20 tons can move approximately 25 cubic yards of material per hour. This translates to 200 cubic yards in an 8-hour workday, dramatically speeding up project timelines. Versatility in Applications Excavators are incredibly versatile machines capable of performing a wide range of tasks beyond just digging. Equipped with various attachments such as hydraulic hammers, augers, grapples, and more, they can handle tasks including demolition, drilling, material handling, and even landscaping. A single excavator can replace multiple pieces of equipment, saving costs and space. For example, 
a hydraulic hammer attachment can deliver up to 1,200 blows per minute, making it highly effective for breaking concrete or rock. Precision and control. Modern excavators are equipped with advanced technology that enhances precision and control, which is particularly beneficial in delicate operations. GPS and machine control systems allow operators to achieve accuracies within a few centimeters. This precision reduces the risk of over-excavation and minimizes the need for rework, thus saving time and resources. For instance, using GPS technology, Operators can achieve a grading accuracy of plus or minus 2 cm, which is crucial for tasks like foundation laying and trenching. Cost Savings The efficiency and versatility of excavators translate into substantial cost savings. By speeding up project timelines and reducing the need for multiple machines, companies can lower labor and equipment costs. A study by the Construction Equipment Association found that using advanced excavators can reduce project costs by up to 30%. Additionally, the fuel efficiency of modern excavators has improved significantly. A 20-ton excavator typically consumes around 10 liters of fuel per hour, making it cost-effective for long-term operations. Safety improvements. Safety is a critical concern on any job site, and excavators contribute significantly to safer working conditions. Their design includes features such as reinforced cabs, better visibility, and advanced stability controls. Moreover, the use of remote control and autonomous technology in some models further enhances safety by allowing operators to control the machine from a safe distance, reducing the risk of accidents in hazardous environments. Environmental benefits. Excavators also offer environmental benefits. Newer models comply with stringent emission standards, reducing their environmental footprint. For instance, Tier 4 final excavators emit up to 90% less particulate matter and nitrogen oxides compared to older models. Furthermore, the increased fuel efficiency means less fuel consumption and, consequently, lower greenhouse gas emissions. Some manufacturers are also developing electric and hybrid excavators, which further reduce environmental impact. A hybrid excavator, for example, can reduce fuel consumption by up to 25%, leading to significant long-term environmental benefits. Enhanced Operator Comfort and Productivity the design of modern excavators prioritizes operator comfort, which is crucial for maintaining productivity over long hours. Features such as ergonomic seats, climate control, and reduced noise levels make the working environment more comfortable. A comfortable operator is more likely to be productive and make fewer errors, contributing to overall project efficiency. According to a study by the International Journal of Industrial Ergonomics, Comfortable working conditions can improve operator productivity by up to 15%. Technological advancements. The integration of technology in excavators has revolutionized the way they are used. Advanced telematics systems allow for real-time monitoring of machine performance, enabling predictive maintenance and reducing downtime. For instance, Caterpillar's product link system provides detailed information on machine location, hours, fuel usage, and maintenance schedules. This data-driven approach can extend the lifespan of the equipment and ensure it operates at peak efficiency. Scalability and adaptability. Excavators come in various sizes, from compact mini excavators weighing around 1 to 2 tons to massive machines used in mining operations weighing over 800 tons. 
This range of sizes makes them adaptable to different project requirements. Many excavators, for instance, are perfect for urban environments where space is limited, while large excavators are essential for heavy-duty tasks like mining and major infrastructure projects. The manufacturing of crawler cranes has experienced significant advancements, particularly with the transition from the conventional single boom form to an integral transition structure. This new design involves welding the structure in one piece, eliminating the need for disassembly and assembly, and greatly simplifying operational steps. Additionally, the adoption of a more commonly used main boom as a component of the twin boom structure has greatly improved the versatility of the boom and eliminated the need for a 90 degrees rotation. As a result, the boom's versatility has been significantly increased, and lifting performance has improved by over 30%. At Sani's Crawler Crane Manufacturing Workshop, advanced technology and meticulous processes come together to produce these sophisticated machines. Wang Kanam, a key figure in the workshop, oversees the production of the Super Boom, ensuring every step is executed with precision. The production of the main boom pipe is a critical aspect of this process. Preheating is essential, requiring temperatures to reach approximately 150 degrees Celsius to ensure proper weld quality. The factory's main boom pipe production line is a pioneering effort in the industry, integrating several automated and manual processes, including automatic feeding and blanking, precise groove processing, manual alignment, robotic automatic welding, and thermal insulation. The system uses grading ruler automatic length fixing technology to cut the main boom pipe with a length error controlled within plus or minus one millimeter, eliminating manual measurement errors. Temperature control is crucial during the welding process. Automatic preheating and infrared temperature measurement systems ensure that the preheating temperature remains between 100 to 150 degrees Celsius, evaporating moisture on the weld surface and preventing hydrogen cracks. The robotic welding system Equipped with a laser tracking system, intelligently identifies weld errors and adjusts the welding process automatically. This reduces the technical demands on manual welders and ensures consistent quality. Post welding, a three-stage insulated cabin accurately controls the cooling process at 300 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Celsius, and 100 degrees Celsius, preventing delayed cracks in the weld joint. The factory employs a rigorous flaw detection system to ensure weld joints are defect-free. The welds undergo 100% ultrasonic flaw detection to guarantee accuracy. Once the high-strength steel pipes pass inspection, they proceed to assembly, machining, shot blasting, and painting, completing the production process. These advancements in crawler crane manufacturing at Sani not only enhance the versatility and performance of the cranes but also streamline production, ensuring high quality and reliable machinery. As Sani 800T and 1250T crawler cranes are prepared for shipment to Vietnam, the Huzhou factory is a hive of activity, with assembly, disassembly, and handling processes being carried out intensely but in an orderly fashion. These cranes boast strong lifting capacity, low ground pressure, small steering radius, excellent grade ability, and the ability to travel with a load without the need for outriggers during operation. The entire machine adopts a modular design, allowing each transportation unit to be designed independently. This modular approach ensures that the cranes are versatile and can be easily transported and assembled on site. The crawler frames of SANY's cranes are equipped with independent traveling driving devices. The planetary gear tapered is driven by the hydraulic traveling motor, enabling independent travel through the transmission of the driving gear. The driving system offers two speed positions, 
Low speed for providing sufficient traction force to enable 100% travel with load and high speed for improving transit efficiency. Additionally, the traveling drive system allows for steepless speed change, ensuring smooth and efficient operation. The track shoes are made from high strength, high wear resistance materials through advanced casting processes. Once installed on the equipment, the tension of the track shoes can be adjusted via the hydraulic cylinder, and the gasket position can be modified to achieve the ideal tension. A standout feature is the one key leveling of outriggers. With the machine's gravity calculated in real time and outrigger balance detected by cylinder pressure sensors, the outriggers can be adjusted to a level state with a single key press. This feature significantly reduces assembly time and improves operational efficiency. The crawler crane is powered by a Cummins QSX-15 engine, delivering an output of 447 kilowatts at 1,800 revolutions per minute. The crane supports a fixed jib length of 12 to 15 meters, and its longest main boom combined with a fixed jib can reach up to 168 plus 12 meters. China's remarkable economic transformation over the past few decades is often described as a miracle, driven by rapid industrialization and urbanization. Central to this transformation has been the role of heavy machinery and equipment factories, which have provided the necessary infrastructure to support vast construction projects, manufacturing, and resource extraction. Heavy trucks are indispensable in the logistics and construction sectors, facilitating the transportation of goods and materials across vast distances. In 2020, China produced over 3.5 million heavy trucks, accounting for nearly 40% of the global market share. Chinese companies like Sani Group, Fao Group, Dongfeng Motor, and Sinatruck have become major players in the global market. These trucks are not only vital for moving construction materials but also for agricultural products, industrial goods, and more. The efficiency and reliability of these vehicles have underpinned the rapid construction of infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and buildings across China. Large excavators play a crucial role in construction and mining operations. In 2020, China produced approximately 450,000 excavators, with companies like Sani and XCMG leading the way. These machines are used to move significant amounts of earth and rock, making them vital for major construction projects, including building foundations, roads, and mining operations. These machines have enabled rapid urban development and infrastructure expansion, contributing to the creation of new cities and industrial zones across China. Concrete machinery, including mixers, pumps, and batching plants, is fundamental in the construction industry. In 2020, China accounted for over 60% of the global production of concrete machinery, with manufacturers such as Zoomlion and Lugon at the forefront. The widespread availability and use of concrete machinery have facilitated the construction of skyscrapers, highways, and bridges, which are hallmarks of China's modern landscape. The rapid production and deployment of concrete have enabled the swift completion of large-scale infrastructure projects, essential for economic development. The welding process, traditionally a labor-intensive and skill-dependent task, has been revolutionized by the advent of welding robots, particularly in China's rapidly expanding industrial landscape. These robotic systems have brought about significant advancements in precision, efficiency, and safety, transforming the manufacturing and construction sectors. Welding robots are equipped with advanced sensors and control systems that ensure consistent and high-quality welds. These robots can maintain precise parameters such as temperature, speed, and angle, reducing the risk of human error and producing uniform welds. Robotic welding systems can operate continuously without fatigue, significantly enhancing productivity. They can perform complex welding tasks at speeds far exceeding human capabilities. For instance, in automotive assembly lines, robots can weld a car body in minutes, a task that would take a human welder much longer. This increased speed and efficiency lead to higher throughput and reduced production times, 
enabling manufacturers to meet growing demand and reduce costs. The introduction of welding robots has also improved workplace safety. Welding is inherently hazardous, involving exposure to high temperatures, intense light, and harmful fumes. Robots can perform these tasks in environments that would be dangerous for human workers, reducing the risk of injuries and health issues. China's integration of welding robots is supported by advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning. These technologies enable robots to learn and adapt to different welding tasks, enhancing their flexibility and application scope. For example, robotic systems can be programmed for various welding techniques, including MIG, TIG, and spot welding, making them versatile tools in multiple industries. The widespread adoption of welding robots in China has contributed to the country's manufacturing efficiency and competitiveness on the global stage. With over 250,000 welding robots in use by 2020, the technology has enabled Chinese manufacturers to produce high-quality products at lower costs. As the largest rotary drilling rig in Asia, the Sani State Route 630 rotary drilling rig features a maximum drilling diameter of 4.5 meters and a depth of 140 meters, with an impressive output torque of 630 kilonewtons m. The rig's manufacturing process involved extensive research and development to address the challenges of super-large diameter and super-deep drilling operations. The R&D team conducted detailed site surveys and collaborated closely with customers to design the State Route 630, ensuring it could handle diverse geological conditions, including large backfills and thick rock layers. High tensile materials with a strength greater than 800 megapascals were selected for the drill rod to provide the necessary durability and weldability. The rig stability and efficiency were achieved through innovative designs, including a double large triangle structure and modular interface design. The State Route 630 is engineered for reliability and high performance. It incorporates multiple gear control systems for both the power unit and the pressurizing system ensuring smooth and efficient operations. This rig is ideally suited for super high-rise constructions above 100 meters, tackling complex drilling challenges with ease. The SET 150S is a state-of-the-art mining truck renowned for its dual independent braking systems, ensuring exceptional safety and performance. The primary braking system is electric, utilizing an advanced energy management system. This system fully absorbs braking energy, allowing the massive vehicle to stop smoothly and efficiently. By converting kinetic energy into electrical energy during braking, this innovative approach not only enhances safety but also improves energy efficiency and reduces wear on mechanical components. Complementing the primary electric brakes, the truck is also equipped with a secondary set of hydraulic brakes. This redundancy ensures that the vehicle maintains a high level of safety in any situation providing a reliable backup in case of any failure in the primary system. Such a dual braking mechanism is vital for the rigorous demands of mining operations, where safety and reliability are paramount. Beyond its braking capabilities, the mining truck features a powerful and efficient powertrain. It operates on two generator sets, which drive the electric motors in tandem with batteries. This configuration delivers substantial power while maintaining stability and durability essential for handling heavy loads in mining environments. The truck's energy management and recovery system further enhances its efficiency, reducing fuel consumption and operational costs. The Eagle International Titan OTR Tire Shear is a state-of-the-art solution for enhancing the flexibility of your off-the-road OTR tire cutting system. Designed to handle large tires, the Titan can effortlessly cut tires up to the size of 27.00 R49. The machine is equipped with three hydraulically powered rollers that facilitate the positioning of the tire. These rollers not only move the tire from side to side and front to back but also enable it to rotate in a circular motion. To ensure precision and safety during the cutting process, a hydraulic probe arm is incorporated to help position and securely hold the tire. The operator has full control over the cut size, ensuring adaptability to various requirements. Additional features of the Titan include an operator control stand and the choice between electric or diesel power options. 
The Eco Razor 63 operates as a state of the art solution for rubber removal, specifically designed for processing some of the largest tires in existence. Its functionality is rooted in a patent pending technology. Here's how it works Rubber removal. The machine is engineered to extract valuable rubber from all three sides of a tire. This comprehensive extraction ensures maximum rubber retrieval, leaving minimal waste. Blade configuration. One of the standout features of the Eco Razor 63 is its adjustable blade configuration. By making minor adjustments, operators can alter the size of the output material. This flexibility allows processors to produce rubber sizes that are most in demand in the market, optimizing profitability. Screening and Packaging after the rubber extraction process, the retrieved rubber is prepared for the next stages. It undergoes screening to ensure quality and consistency. Once screened, it's packaged and made ready for sale. Downstream processing. Post the rubber extraction, the remaining tire isn't discarded. Instead, it's channeled downstream for additional processing. Alternatively, it can be repurposed into various useful products, showcasing the machine's commitment to sustainability and resource optimization. The Eco Extractor 63 is a groundbreaking machine specifically designed to extract steel beads from the world's largest mining tires, particularly those with a 63-inch rim. This innovative equipment stands out due to its proprietary design, which ensures the efficient extraction of clean beads from these robust tires, which are otherwise nearly indestructible. One of the standout features of the Eco Extractor 63 is its unique reverse hook design. This, combined with an automatic bead ejector, streamlines the extraction process, making it swift and efficient. The machine's design prioritizes safety and efficiency, allowing for a single operator to control the entire process remotely. This single-person remote control operation not only reduces labor costs but also enhances the speed of the bead extraction process. In terms of specifications, the Eco Extractor 63 is built to handle tires up to 63 inches .6 meters, in rim size. Once processed, the output material consists of large steel beads separated cleanly from the tire. The machine boasts an impressive capacity, able to process up to 10 tires per hour. It is powered by a 125 HP engine and has dimensions of 6.7 by 2.4 x 2.4 meters with an extractor width of 18 meters. The introduction of the Eco Extractor 63 is a significant leap in the tire recycling industry. Brad Swenson, the president of Eco Green Equipment, expressed his enthusiasm about the machine, emphasizing its potential to revolutionize the recycling of large mining tires. The primary advantage of the Eco Extractor 63 is its ability to make tire recycling more straightforward, efficient, and profitable. By processing more tires in a shorter time frame, businesses can increase their profit margins while also contributing positively to the environment. Rubber recycling plays a pivotal role in environmental conservation and sustainable resource management. As the global demand for rubber products, especially tires, continues to soar, the amount of rubber waste generated has become a significant concern. Discarded tires, if left untreated, can become breeding grounds for pests, contribute to environmental pollution, and pose fire hazards. Recycling rubber not only addresses these environmental issues but also offers economic benefits. By repurposing used rubber, industries can reduce the need for virgin rubber, leading to decreased deforestation and habitat destruction. Recycled rubber can be transformed into various products, 
including playground surfaces, asphalt, and even new tires. This process not only conserves resources but also reduces the carbon footprint associated with rubber production. A prime example of the rubber recycling industry's innovation is this rubber recycling line with waste less tire recycling. This state-of-the-art facility can process up to 3 tons of tires per hour. The efficiency of such a line means that in a single day, vast amounts of discarded tires can be transformed into valuable materials, ready for reuse in various applications. By adopting such advanced recycling methods, we can ensure a more sustainable future, where resources are utilized to their maximum potential, and environmental harm is minimized. Here is a detailed overview of the manufacturing process of rubber mats rolls for gym flooring. Sifting crumb to remove impurities. The crumb material is sifted to remove any impurities, ensuring the quality and purity of the rubber material. Mixing colorful crumb with poo binder. In this step, one kilogram of poo binder is mixed with eight kilograms of colorful crumb material. This mixture is essential for binding the rubber crumb together. Uniform mixing. The crumb and poo binder mixture is thoroughly mixed for approximately eight minutes to achieve a uniform blend. Uniform mixing is crucial for product consistency. Filling molds. The mixed crumb is then filled into molds, and it takes approximately 15 minutes to completely fill a mold. Hydraulic pressing. The filled molds are subjected to a hydraulic press with a pressure of 31.5 MPa. This pressure helps compact the material and give it the desired density and thickness. Mold fixation. The molds are fixed in place to maintain their shape during the vulcanizing process. Vulcanizing. The molds are kept in place for 24 hours for vulcanization. This process enhances the durability and elasticity of the rubber material. Removing rubber columns from molds. After vulcanization, the rubber columns are carefully removed from the molds. Fixing rubber columns on whirling machine. The rubber columns are fixed onto a whirling machine which is used for cutting the material into rolls. Cutting with precision. Cutting is controlled by computers to ensure precision. The distance between cuts can be adjusted to achieve different thicknesses as required. These rubber mats are available in various thicknesses, 
ranging from 4 mm to 12 mm, widths 1 m, 1.2 m, 1.25 m, and lengths, customizable between 10 m to 20 m. The final products are not only durable and slip resistant but also eco friendly, non toxic, tasteless, and fireproof. Final cutting and measuring. Each roll is cut to a specific length, and extra care is taken to cut off approximately 1 meter at the beginning and ending of each roll. This ensures that every roll is uniform and meets the specified length requirements. This comprehensive manufacturing process at Acapella Rubber Industries guarantees the production of top-quality rubber mats rolls that meet a wide range of customer needs while maintaining a strong focus on eco-friendliness and safety. Rolling, Printing, and Packing The final step involves rolling the rubber mats, printing labels or branding as needed, and then carefully packing the rolls for shipping to customers. Seamless crumb rubber coatings are a popular choice for various surfaces due to their advantages, including their aesthetic appeal, durability, and low maintenance requirements. Primer creation. Necessary components are mixed in precise proportions to create a primer. This primer serves as a bonding agent and is applied to the prepared substrate. It ensures a strong adhesion between the surface and the rubber coating. Mixing raw materials. In parallel with the primer preparation, the raw materials for the rubber coating are mixed. This mixture typically includes crumb rubber, pigment dye for coloration, and adhesive glue. The proportions are carefully measured to achieve the desired consistency and properties. Combining components. The crumb rubber is added to the mixing process, followed by the pigment dye. The adhesive glue is introduced at the last moment to ensure a uniform mixture. Smoothing. After the application of the rubber coating, the surface is smoothed using rollers. This step helps in achieving a uniform and seamless finish. Drying and curing. Once the coating is applied, it needs time to dry and cure. Typically, it takes about 24 hours for the glue to set completely. After this period, the surface is ready for use. One of the advantages of seamless crumb rubber coatings is their flexibility and design. Patterns and color transitions can be incorporated as per the client's preferences. To do this, a section of the coating can be cut out, cleaned, and replaced with a mixture of a different color. This new mixture is rolled out using a roller to create intricate patterns. Ellen Motore pioneers the creation of generators, powering wind and hydroelectric plants, and propelling industrial machinery like fans and compressors. The hallmark of their craftsmanship lies in the uniqueness of each machine, planned, designed, and predominantly assembled by skilled hands. As exemplified by Christiana Mayer, who, having completed insulation cutting, intricately outfits stators with copper wire. Careful insertion of foil safeguards against wire damage, followed by manual coiling. Reinhard Schlegel, an adept technician, undertakes the installation process, welding and connecting the winding into the housing before bestowing the engine monitoring unit. Ellen delivers 3,000 machines every year. The production process of steel rods begins by heating the billets in a reheating furnace. High pressure water jets are sprayed on the heated billets to clean off any oxidized parts, AKS, the steel manufacturing plant in Bangladesh has state of the art descaling devices that prevent spot cooling during the descaling process, is maintaining a constant temperature is crucial for producing quality steel bars. After descaling, the billets are sent to the rolling mill. AKS uses a rolling technology that combines horizontal and vertical stands. This unique feature allows them to roll the billets into desired shapes without continuous turning, which can harm the inner particles of the billet and reduce the strength of the steel bars. The combination of horizontal and vertical stands avoids this issue and increases the density of the material.
The rolling mill at AKS consists of a roughing mill with a production line of 18 mils, ensuring the production of high-quality rods in the shortest possible time. The rolling process is followed by the thermomechanical treatment TMT, of the steel bars. This involves passing the heated bars through a high-speed cooling system, which creates temperature differences between the core and surface, resulting in layered steel bars known as DMT steel bars. The cooled steel bars are then transferred to a cooling bed, where they further solidify. AKS has the longest cooling bed in Bangladesh, measuring 120 meters. Once cooled, automated machines are used to bind the finished steel bars together for easy handling and transportation. At Pewik, the chain production process is a carefully orchestrated endeavor, recognizing that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. The journey begins with the wire, where cleanliness and precision are paramount. In the manufacturing of chains, nothing is left to chance. The length and bending of the wire are precisely defined, and each link is seamlessly joined to the next. The welding process raises the question, is there even such a thing as a weak link at Pewik? Every element undergoes an identical process, ensuring uniform quality. The result is an unforgettable experience for the customer, instilling confidence in the product. A trademark quality grade and an individual code signify the commitment to excellence. The heat treatment system at Pewig ignites true enthusiasm among connoisseurs, defining the toughness and resistance of each chain. Attention then turns to the surface, where chains are treated with techniques such as sandblasting, electro-galvanization, or environmentally friendly lacquering, giving each chain its distinctive final touch. Quality assurance continues with rigorous testing in the areas of bending and breaking, attested using a diamond stylus. As the chains bid farewell, high-quality packaging ensures safe and reliable shipment to every corner of the world. For Pewig, Strength alone is not enough. It's about ensuring that Pewig Strong is synonymous with unparalleled quality and reliability. The new rolling mill at Vostalpine Groblik in Linz marks a transformative era after 57 years and 25 million tons of service from the old mill. After an astonishingly brief assembly time of just 31 days, the new rolling mill commenced operations and setting a world record for efficiency. This state-of-the-art facility is designed to meet future high-quality demands. A highly rigid mill stand with precision adjusting systems serves as the foundation for improved plate rolling. Thickness accuracy and flatness performance are enhanced through efficient work roll shifting, increasing rolling force from 5,000 to 8,000 tons. The unique drivetrain allows for high rolling torques, enabling substantial reductions per pass. The mill ensures optimal deformation, finest microstructure, and superior material properties, making it an investment in the future of plate production. It stands as a guarantee for high productivity and availability for decades to come. The Akurl Tandem CNC press brake is a powerhouse when it comes to bending large format poles, seamlessly combining advanced technology and robust engineering to achieve precise and efficient results. The process begins with the CNC front material feeding system, a critical element designed for optimal material positioning. With a bed length of 58 feet, this system ensures that large format poles are accurately and securely placed for bending. The 4 plus 1 axis configuration further refines the control over the material, 
allowing operators to manipulate it in multiple directions with precision. The integration of a light pole pusher system, complemented by conveyors, introduces automation into the material handling process, streamlining workflow and enhancing overall efficiency. Driving the entire operation are the two Delem DA66T2D 3D controls, the brain of the press brake. These controls offer a user-friendly interface for programming and executing bending sequences. The 2D, 3D capabilities are particularly crucial when dealing with the complex geometries of large format poles. Operators can visualize and simulate bends before execution, ensuring that each bend meets the exact specifications. To address the challenges posed by the substantial size and weight of large format poles, the CNC crowning system comes into play. This system dynamically adjusts the position of the beam to compensate for any potential deflection, ensuring uniform bends across the entire length of the pole. It is a key factor in achieving the precision required for large-scale bending projects. The Hoerbeiger hydraulics and valves play a pivotal role in providing the necessary power and control to execute bends with utmost precision. This hydraulic system is finely tuned to handle the immense force required for bending large format poles while maintaining accuracy and repeatability. The machine's comprehensive set of upper-lower tooling adds a layer of versatility, allowing it to adapt to various pole diameters and profiles. This adaptability is essential when working on diverse projects that demand different bending specifications. With a towering height of 65 inches under the floor, the press brake accommodates the substantial dimensions of large format poles. The back gauge speed of 350 IPM, max X travel of 2,100 inches, distance between columns of 295 inches, beam stroke of 17.7 inches, and daylight of 49.2 inches collectively contribute to the machine's efficiency, enabling swift and accurate positioning of the material. Manufacturing process of wrenches, Yanni's Way, known for its complete range of high-quality wrenches, follows a meticulous manufacturing process to ensure the durability and performance of their products. Raw material. Jones Way wrenches are made from premium steel, the raw material is heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius to increase its overall strength and reduce potential stress concentrations. It is then elongated using a rolling machine. Forging, the rolled steel is sent to the forging press. The forging process involves three die pressings. The first die presses out the general shape of the wrench. The second die presses the finished shape. and the third die cuts out the blank. Chemical grinding. After forging, the wrench blank undergoes preliminary chemical grinding. It is placed in a container with a chemical solution and ceramic stones that grind off the ragged edges, ensuring a smooth surface. Polishing. For Jones Way W26 mirror polished wrenches, the wrench blanks also undergo hand polishing to achieve a highly reflective surface finish. Stamping. Once the technician ensures the correct size, the wrench is placed on a press for stamping. A specially designed mold is used to stamp the Jonesway logo, size, and item number onto the wrench. The stamping process also fortifies the hardness and metal structure of the wrench. Heat treating. After stamping, the wrench goes through the heat treating process to maximize the strength and hardness of the metal. This step enhances the overall durability of the wrench. Sandblasting. Following heat treating, the wrench undergoes sandblasting to clean up the carbonized surface. 
This process removes any remaining impurities and enhances the effectiveness of subsequent surface treatments. Chemical grinding for mirror polished wrenches. For Jonesway W26 mirror polished wrenches, an additional round of chemical grinding is performed to achieve a finely polished finish. Open end grinding. The open end of the wrench goes through three grinding stations to ensure precise dimensions and a smooth surface. Cleaning. The technician cleans up any lubricant residue from the wrench and trims off sharp edges that may have resulted from the production process. This step ensures the wrench is free from any contaminants or potential hazards. Plating. The semi-finished product is then subjected to a plating process. Jonesway employs a specially designed plating technique that enables the plating material to be deposited on the tool surface more effectively, resulting in a perfect surface treatment. Testing. The entire batch of finished wrenches undergoes sample inspection conducted by a Jonesway professional quality control engineer. Packing. Once the finished products pass the quality inspection, they are ready to be packed for delivery. The manufacturing process of a 24 pipe mill with Yoder cage forming is a sophisticated and multi step procedure aimed at transforming raw steel coils into high quality pipes. This intricate process, spanning from the entry section to the finishing line, requires precise coordination and advanced machinery. The initial steps take place in the entry section, where a coil car is utilized to transport steel coils to the uncoiler. The uncoiler plays a crucial role in unwinding the steel coil, allowing for further processing. To ensure stability during this operation, a hold-down roll is employed. Once the steel coil is unwound, the coil peeler comes into play, peeling the leading edge of the coil and facilitating a seamless transition for subsequent processing stages. The pinch leveler is responsible for straightening and leveling the steel strip, preparing it for the next steps in the manufacturing process. A crop shear is then employed to cut the leading edge of the strip, providing a clean starting point for the subsequent stages. The skewed conveyor transfers the leveled strip to the forming section, setting the foundation for the tube production process. The forming section is a critical part of the manufacturing process. It begins with the transition and breakdown stand, initiating the shaping process of the strip. The transition stand and breakdown stand further mold the strip into a tubular form, while the edge bending stand refines the edges of the strip, ensuring precision in the tube's shape. The introduction of the Yoder cage forming technique occurs at the cage roll stand, where the strip is carefully shaped into a tubular structure.
The computerized role positioning system, CRP, plays a vital role in this stage, ensuring accurate role positioning for precise tube shaping. The fin pass stand follows, refining the tube shape to meet specific dimensional requirements and quality standards. The welding section is a pivotal stage in the manufacturing process. Here, the tube edges are joined using a high-frequency HF welder and squeeze roll stand. This combination applies high-frequency welding to create a secure bond, and the squeeze roll stand ensures proper compression for a strong weld. Following the welding process, the tube undergoes additional refinement. The inside bead cutter removes excess material from within the welded tube while the outside bead cutter trims any external excess, contributing to the final product's precision. A scrap winder is employed to collect and manage the waste material generated during the welding process, enhancing the overall efficiency of the operation. Inline ultrasonic testing, UST, is a critical step to check for weld integrity and identify any potential defects. Seam annealing follows, a process where the welded seam is heated to enhance its strength and durability. The pull-out stand comes into play after the welding and refining processes. Its function is to transfer the welded tube to the cooling section, where the tube undergoes a cooling process to set its shape. The cooling section includes both air cooling stands and water cooling stands, each contributing to the cooling process, ensuring the tube meets the required specifications and quality standards. Moving forward in the manufacturing process, the sizing section and cutoff section play crucial roles in refining the tube's dimensions. The sizing stand is responsible for shaping and sizing the tube, while the Turk's head further refines its shape, contributing to the overall precision of the final product. An inline marking machine is introduced to add identification markings to the tube, a necessary step for tracking and quality control purposes. The flying cutoff machine is a precision tool used to cut the tube to the desired length, ensuring accuracy in the final product. The pull-out roll stand then takes charge, transferring the cut tubes to the subsequent stages of the manufacturing process. The finishing line is the culmination of the manufacturing process, where the run-out conveyor and coil skid are instrumental in moving finished tubes to various machines for additional processing. The finishing line itself consists of a series of machines designed to add the final touches to the tubes. An end facing and chamfering machine prepares tube ends for further use, ensuring they meet the required specifications.
The kick-in and receiver mechanisms facilitate efficient transfer, while the kick-out and roller conveyor systems direct finished tubes to the next stage of the process. Continuing down the finishing line, a hydrostatic tester is employed to assess the tubes for strength and integrity. This critical step ensures that the final product meets stringent quality standards. An offline ultrasonic tester provides additional checks for defects and overall quality, enhancing the quality control measures in place. In some instances, a manual ultrasonic tester may be utilized for further ultrasonic testing, depending on specific quality assurance requirements. The varnish coating machine is introduced to apply a protective coating to the tubes, safeguarding them against corrosion and external elements. This coating enhances the longevity and durability of the tubes, ensuring they meet industry standards. An end cropping machine is then employed to finalize tube ends, ensuring they are precisely cut and shaped according to specifications. If threading is required, a threading machine is brought into the process to add threads to the tube ends. The final step in this stage is the power tightening machine, which secures threaded ends, completing the tube preparation for use in various applications. In the realm of tire manufacturing, Goodyear stands as a beacon of innovation and quality. One of the company's most commendable initiatives is its retreading process, a sustainable approach that breathes new life into used tires. This process not only exemplifies Goodyear's commitment to environmental responsibility but also offers a cost-effective solution for fleets, ensuring they get the most out of their tire investments. At the heart of Goodyear's retreading process is the initial inspection. This step is crucial, determining the viability of a tire for retreading. Using a combination of visual and electronic detection methods, experts meticulously assess each casing. The goal is to identify any damages or wear that might compromise the tire's structural integrity. If minor repairs are needed, the tire is marked accordingly and sent to the repair area. In the tire repair phase, damaged casings undergo various repair procedures tailored to the nature and extent of the damage. Simple nail holes or punctures, which are quite common, are addressed with precision. Depending on whether the tire will undergo heat curing, different repair methods, such as chemical cure cement or heat cure cement combined with rope rubber, are employed.
More extensive damages, like those affecting the casing's wires or fabric, necessitate section repairs. The meticulous nature of this phase ensures that each tire is restored to a state where it can safely be retreaded. Buffing, the subsequent step, is where the tire truly begins its transformation. In this phase, the old tread is meticulously removed using specialized buffing machines. These machines are designed to not only strip away the worn-out tread but also to prepare the tire's surface for its new tread. During buffing, operators remain vigilant, looking out for hidden defects like sharp objects embedded in the casing. Any such defects are promptly addressed, ensuring the tire's surface is pristine and ready for the next stage. Building the tire is a pivotal step in the retreading process. Once the old tread is removed and the surface prepared, it's time to apply the new tread. Goodyear employs two primary building methods, pre-cure and unicircle. The pre-cure method is particularly popular due to the vast array of tread designs and sizes available. As the name suggests, in the pre-cure method, the tread is already cured before being applied to the tire. Depending on the tread's design, it might come in long strips that need to be cut to size or as seamless circles, like Goodyear's unicircle treads, which are stretched and fitted around the tire casing. Curing is arguably the most critical phase in the retreading process. It's here that the new tread is firmly bonded to the tire casing. This bonding is achieved through a carefully calibrated combination of time, temperature, and pressure. Goodyear employs a technique called enveloping to create a pressure differential between the inside of the casing and the outside of the tread, ensuring a strong bond. The enveloping process involves encasing the tire in a rubber membrane, which is then sealed off at the bead areas using specialized methods. Throughout the curing process, conditions inside the curing chamber are continuously monitored, ensuring optimal bonding of the tread to the casing.
In the final inspection and finish phase, every tire is rigorously inspected for any potential issues, from separations and repair quality to overall appearance. Advanced tools, like the Matuzi G100 high pressure tester, are employed to detect even the minutest of defects. Once the inspection is complete, the tire undergoes a finishing process, where it's made to look as good as new, with vents trimmed, repairs buffed, and a fresh coat of black tire paint applied to its sidewalls. The Flat Track LT Re Tire Force and Moment Measurement System is an advanced tool designed to simulate and measure tire behavior under various driving conditions, all within a controlled environment. Here's how it works. Simulation Platform. The system employs a flat track, replicating the road surface, on which the tire rolls. This ensures that the tire experiences conditions similar to real-world driving. Application of Forces. As the tire moves on the track, the system can apply different forces and torques to it, simulating scenarios like rapid acceleration, hard braking, and sharp cornering. This is crucial for understanding how a tire would respond to different driving maneuvers. Advanced sensors. Integrated into the system are sophisticated sensors that capture data on the tire's reactions. These sensors measure lateral and longitudinal forces, as well as the moments, torques, acting on the tire in real time. Dynamic control. One of the standout features of the Flat Track LT Re is its dynamic control capabilities. This allows researchers to make precise adjustments to the testing conditions, ensuring a wide range of scenarios can be explored. Data analysis. Once the data is captured, it's processed and analyzed to derive insights into the tire's performance characteristics. This information is invaluable for tire manufacturers, automotive engineers, and researchers aiming to optimize tire designs or improve vehicle safety. The management of waste tires is a growing environmental concern, and small machines designed for this purpose are making a significant impact. These machines are not only compact but also efficient, making them ideal for both small and large-scale operations. The first step in the tire processing journey involves cutting the entire tire into two parts. This is achieved using a specialized machine with a capacity to handle 60 to 80 tires per hour. Operating on a power of 5.5 kilowatts, this machine ensures that the tires are halved efficiently, preparing them for the next phase of processing. Following the initial cut, the halved tires are then processed to be transformed into rubber blocks. These blocks, measuring between 50 to 80 millimeters, are produced automatically by a machine with an impressive capacity ranging from 3,000 kilograms per hour to 6,000 kilograms per hour. Requiring 25 kilowatts of power, this machine is designed to handle the whole tire, ensuring a high capacity output with safe operations. Lastly, the new type tire shredder is a game changer in the waste tire processing industry. This machine can take in the entire tire as input, even those with a maximum diameter of 1,400 millimeters. Its high-speed operation allows it to crush a tire in just 10 seconds. With a processing capacity of 5 to 8 tons per hour, it produces rubber blocks sized between 250 to 400 millimeters. Remarkably, this high efficiency is achieved with a power consumption of only 18.5 kilowatts.
Tire baling plays a pivotal role in the tire recycling sector. It involves the compression of discarded tires into dense, easily transportable bales, which are then forwarded for recycling. The hydraulic tire baler, specifically the R42 tire baler, stands out as a cutting-edge machine tailored for this purpose. Its prowess and durability are showcased in its capacity to bale a substantial number of tires into a singular compact unit. In this video, the R42 tire baler compressed 91 mixed tires, producing a single bale weighing approximately 834 kilograms. This bale, with dimensions of roughly 183 centimeters by 102 centimeters by 112 centimeters, is primed for the subsequent phase of tire recycling. In another instance, the baler commendably compacted over 110 mixed size tires, resulting in a bale that weighed in excess of 1,020 kilograms, maintaining the same dimensions, ready for both transport and recycling. The design and technical specifications of the R42 tire baler are fine-tuned for peak performance. With overall dimensions of 229 centimeters in width, 135 centimeters in depth, and a towering height of 386 centimeters, it's evident of its substantial capacity. The baler chamber, where the tires undergo compression, has a depth of 107 centimeters and a height of 112 centimeters. The feed height stands at a convenient 66 centimeters, facilitating easier tire loading for workers. The baler's cylinder bore measures 18 centimeters by 10 centimeters, and it boasts a rod stroke of 122 centimeters, ensuring efficient tire compression. Driven by a 20 horsepower motor, the baler operates on a three-phase electrical system, with voltage options of 208, 230, or 460. The control voltage ranges between 110-120 back. The spacious load opening, measuring 183 centimeters in width and 66 centimeters in height, can accommodate a significant number of tires. Once compressed, the bales measure 183 centimeters in width, 107 centimeters in depth, and 122 centimeters in height. The manufacturing process of pliers begins by heating the raw material to 1000 degrees Celsius. This high temperature makes the steel malleable for shaping. The forging process involves three die pressings. The first die press shapes the general outline of the pliers, followed by the second die press, which refines the shape further. Finally, the third die cuts out the blank form of the pliers. After forging, the technician grinds the front side and jaws of the pliers to achieve the desired finish. Lathing. After the forging and grinding steps, the pliers move on to the lathing process. Lathing involves the use of a lathe machine, which rotates the pliers at high speed while a cutting tool removes excess material to achieve the desired dimensions and smoothness. The lathe machine allows for precise shaping and finishing of the pliers, ensuring that they meet the required specifications. Assembling. Following the lathing step, the pliers are ready for assembly. A technician inserts a rivet into the broached hole and then presses it to assemble the pliers securely. This assembly process ensures that all parts are properly aligned and connected. Heat treating. Once assembled, the pliers undergo a heat treating process. Heat treating involves subjecting the pliers to specific temperatures and controlled cooling to maximize their metal strength and hardness. Surface treating. After heat treating, the pliers undergo surface treatment. 
the technician bathes the pliers in a rust inhibitor solution to protect them from corrosion. This treatment helps prolong the lifespan of the pliers. Subsequently, the pliers are dried, ensuring that they are ready for the next stage of the manufacturing process. Testing. The entire batch of finished pliers undergoes sample inspection by Jonesway Professional Quality Control Engineers. Manufacturing process of socket raw material. Every Jonas Way socket is crafted using premium steel sourced from Taiwan China Steel Corporation, the leading steel manufacturer in Taiwan. The high quality steel material enhances the durability and performance of the final product. Cold forging. The coiled steel is first straightened and then cut into short billets. These billets are then subjected to the cold forging process. Cold forging involves shaping the metal at room temperature using high pressure dies. The billets are placed in a forging press where they are subjected to intense pressure. This pressure deforms the metal and molds it into the desired shape of the socket. Lathing. Lathing is a machining process used to shape the socket rim. A lathe machine is employed, which rotates the socket while a cutting tool removes excess material to create the desired shape. The technician operating the lathe carefully sculpts the socket rim, ensuring precision and accuracy. Knurling. Knurling is a process that adds texture and grip to the surface of the socket. It enhances the ergonomics and usability of the final product. Roller stamping. Roller stamping is employed to add the Jones Way logo and item number to the socket. The socket is placed on the twin roller stamp, and the logo and item number are engraved onto the surface. The twin rollers carry the engraved design, and as they rotate, they transfer the design onto the socket. Heat treating. After the roller stamping, the socket undergoes a heat treating process. This step maximizes the strength and hardness of the metal. Sandblasting. The socket is subjected to a sandblasting procedure to clean the carbonized surface. This process optimizes the effectiveness of the subsequent surface treatment. Grinding. The socket then undergoes a series of grinding processes to achieve a smooth surface texture. This step maximizes the effectiveness of the plating process. Plating. Following the grinding process, the semi-finished socket goes through a plating process. The factory employs a specially designed plating technique that ensures effective deposition of the plating material on the tool's surface, resulting in a perfect surface treatment. Testing a professional quality engineer conducts sample inspections on the entire batch of finished products. At the heart of China's metal zinc production lies the intricate process of zinc smelting. In the industrial landscape, witness the transformative journey from ore to gleaming metal within the confines of a PKU Pioneer smelter. Here, advanced technology takes center stage as enriched oxygen is deftly injected into non-ferrous metal smelting furnaces. This ingenious technique not only reduces fuel consumption but also amplifies output while minimizing emissions, marking a leap towards efficiency and cost effectiveness. PKU Pioneer's prowess in constructing over 30 VPSAO2 plants underscores its commitment to advancing the metallurgy of non ferrous metals, encompassing copper, lead, nickel, zinc, tin, and gold. The manufacturing process of church bells at the Whitechapel Bell Foundry is a fascinating journey that transforms raw materials into timeless instruments of sound. The foundry, known for its historical significance, stands as the birthplace of iconic bells such as the Liberty Bell of America and Big Ben. The process begins with the transformation of bell metal into liquid form through the intense heat of the furnace. Bell metal 
a bronze alloy composed of copper and tin, is meticulously crafted to ensure the purity of the mixture. The molten metal is then cleansed of slag, the impurities that rise to the surface, ensuring the final product is of the highest quality. The shaping of the bell takes place in a handmade clay mold, divided into two parts known as the cope and the core. The coke sits over the core, creating a loose-fitting giant thimble with a gap between the two clay sections. This space is where the molten bell metal is poured, giving shape to the bell. Any excess metal is poured into ingots for future use. The bells are cast on Fridays, left to cool over the weekend, and on Mondays, the workers eagerly retrieve their creations from the molds, breaking away the dry and crumbly cope. An interesting historical note is that this foundry is where the Liberty Bell and Big Ben were cast. The latter, weighing a colossal 13.5 tons, posed a unique challenge requiring the enlargement and shaping of the foundry door for its extraction. Unlike such giants, the bells in question do not face such constraints. With some skilled maneuvering, the top of the heavy iron housing is lifted away to reveal the clay-covered bell within. Following casting, the bells undergo tuning, a critical step to ensure they produce the desired notes. An instrument measures the different tones a bell can produce, and little bits of metal are shaved off as needed by a hard steel tooth. This precision in tuning was not possible in the past, highlighting the advances in bell manufacturing. Once tuned, the bells face the journey to their final destination, the belfry. Volunteers, unafraid of heights, utilize chains and pulleys, along with the aid of an electric winch, to hoist the heavy bells to their lofty positions. In contrast to the past, where manual labor or horsepower was required, modern technology has significantly eased the process. The final steps involve securing the bells in their designated positions, attaching the clapper with utmost care, and installing the bell wheel, a heavy wooden frame that holds the bell rope. The bell ringers, or campanologists, play a crucial role in bringing the bells to life. With passion and precision, they pull the ropes, setting the bells in motion, and creating the resonant, beautiful sound that has echoed through the British countryside for centuries. This section is a detailed description of the manufacturing process of a screwdriver. Making screwdriver blade, slotted. The process starts by taking coiled steel and flattening the steel tip to the correct slotted size. The edge is then trimmed off and the flattened tip is ground to shape. Making screwdriver blade, Phillips, the beveled crosspoint of the Phillips drive code is precisely cut using high precision knife mold machinery. The technician checks the drive code to ensure the screwdriver tip meets the standard.
making flange groove. The technician creates the flange groove on the opposite end of the tip. The flange groove is designed to lock the screwdriver shaft into the handle. The twin flange groove design ensures a firm embedding of the screwdriver blade into the handle, increasing product endurance. Heat treating. After making the flange groove, the screwdriver blade undergoes a heat treating process to maximize the strength of the metal. Sandblasting. The screwdriver blade is subjected to the sandblasting procedure to clean up the carbonized surface. This process enhances the effect of the surface treatment. Plating. The semi-finished product goes through a plating process. Jones Way utilizes a specially designed plating technique that ensures effective deposition of the plating material on the tool surface, perfecting the surface treatment. Injecting Handle the plated screwdriver blade is placed into an injection mold, and a special material is injected to create the handle. This process firmly embeds the screwdriver blade into the handle. Jones Way's color handle design uses different colors to distinguish different drive codes, making it easier for end users to find the appropriate screwdriver. Testing. The entire batch of finished products undergoes sample inspection by Jones Way's professional quality control engineers. Printing. Once the screwdriver has passed quality inspection, the technician prints the size and drive code icon on the bottom of the handle. This feature allows users to identify the size and drive code without picking up the screwdriver. Packing. After passing quality inspection, the finished products are ready to be packed for delivery. Bereda, based in China and recognized as the primary choice of 20 Fortune Global 500 enterprises, stands out in the manufacturing of rolled steel balls. With a rigorous quality control system, the company ensures the excellence of each steel ball produced. Boasting an impressive annual output of 200,000 tons and backed by 30 years of exporting experience, Bereda has become a leading force in the industry. Manufacturing hot rolled steel balls through rotary cutting and roll forging processes, Bereda guarantees fast delivery, large-scale production, and unwavering quality. This makes them an ideal choice for entities engaged in long-term procurement strategies. The shift from traditional cast iron balls to rolled balls in ball mills has been pivotal, especially in high-capacity mills used by large-scale metal mining ventures globally. Bereda's annual steelmaking capacity of 500,000 tons for various forged products enables the customization of raw materials according to specific requirements. With advanced heat treatment technologies introduced in their steel ball business since 2015, Bereda has earned the trust of over 10 companies listed in the Global Mining Top 40 by PwC. The production of 120mm steel balls involves a specialized process using the D120 skew rolling mill machine, a key component in this intricate manufacturing system. Operating in Armenia, the skew rolling mill is tailored for grinding steel balls of various materials, finding applications in diverse industries such as mining, gold extraction, 
copper processing, and more. This state-of-the-art machine plays a pivotal role in the metallurgical and mining sectors, as well as in cement, thermal power, and magnetic materials industries. Its versatility extends to coal water mixtures, pellets, superfine powder, slag, fly ash, calcium carbonate, and quartz sand processing. The skew rolling mill is particularly designed for the precise formation of steel balls through its rolling mechanism, ensuring uniformity and quality. As an integral part of the grinding ball or rod milling process, the skew rolling mill enhances efficiency in material processing. Its widespread usage underscores its importance in facilitating the production of steel balls vital for various industrial applications, contributing to the robustness and reliability of materials used in critical sectors. The manufacturing process of pipes involves a series of specialized machines and equipment that play crucial roles in shaping, welding, and finishing the pipes. Magnet Lifter. This equipment is used for lifting and handling raw materials, such as steel coils or plates, with the help of magnetic force. Edge Milling Machine. The edge milling machine is employed to mill the edges of the steel plates, ensuring that they are smooth and precise. Pre-Bender Machine. The pre-bender machine is utilized to curve the edges of the steel plates before they are formed into a cylindrical shape. This pre-bending process facilitates the subsequent bending and welding steps. In feeder machine. This machine assists in feeding the steel plates into the pipe manufacturing line in a controlled and synchronized manner, ensuring a continuous and efficient production process. JCO Press Bending Machine The JCO Press Bending Machine is a key component in forming the steel plates into a cylindrical shape. It applies pressure to bend the plates into the desired curvature. Turning Transfer Car The turning transfer car is responsible for transporting the formed pipes from one manufacturing station to another. It facilitates the seamless movement of pipes within the production line. Tack Welding Machine Tack welding involves temporarily welding the edges of the pipes to hold them in place before the final welding process. This ensures that the pipes maintain their shape during the subsequent welding steps. Inside Welding Machine. The inside welding machine performs the internal welding of the pipes. It welds the seam along the length of the pipe from the inside, creating a strong and secure bond. Back Bead Cutting Machine. After the inside welding process, the back bead cutting machine trims and smoothens the welded area to achieve a uniform surface finish and remove excess material. Outside Welding Machine. This machine is responsible for the external welding of the pipes. It welds the seam along the outer surface, completing the welding process and ensuring the integrity of the pipe. Four-way machine. Expanding machine. The four-way machine, also known as an expanding machine, expands the diameter of the pipe to meet the specified dimensions. 
This step is crucial for achieving the required size and shape. End facing machine. The end facing machine trims and squares off the ends of the pipes, ensuring that they meet the specified length and have a smooth and even finish. The washing device cleans the pipes, removing any residue or contaminants left during the manufacturing process. The X ray test machine is employed to inspect the welds for any defects or irregularities. Turning conveyor. The turning conveyor assists in transferring the pipes to different orientations for various processes. The vanish coating machine applies a protective coating to the pipes, safeguarding them against corrosion and enhancing their durability. Open die forging, also known as free forging, is a drop forging process where metal is deformed into desired shapes without any limitations between the top and bottom anvils. Unlike closed die forging, open die forging allows for flexibility in shaping and operates with relatively simple production equipment, resulting in lower costs. This forging method is particularly suitable for heavy machinery equipment and plays a vital role in producing important parts. One of the key advantages of open die forging is the elimination of defects found in casting blanks, such as shrinkage, gas holes, and porosity. As a result, products manufactured through open die forging exhibit higher mechanical properties. However, it's important to note that the shape and dimensions of open die forgings are primarily controlled by manual operation. Consequently, the size accuracy of the products is relatively lower, requiring larger machining allowances and higher working strength. Therefore, open die forging is mainly employed for single and low volume production. Open die forging equipment consists mainly of forging hammers and hydraulic presses. The commonly used forging hammers include air hammers and steam hammers, while hydraulic presses utilize static pressure produced by liquid to deform the blanks. Hydraulic presses are particularly necessary for producing large forgings. The basic open die forging process encompasses various operations, including ips setting, drawing out, punching, bending, torsion, mismatch, cutting, and welding. Drawing out, also known as elongation, involves reducing the cross-sectional area of the blank while increasing its length. This process is commonly used for forging rod and shaft parts and can be carried out on a flat anvil or by drawing out on a core shaft. The latter involves inserting a core shaft into a punched blank and gradually drawing it out to achieve the desired length while maintaining the same inner diameter. This method is suitable for sleeve type forgings. Ip setting is a forging process that reduces the height and increases the cross sectional area of the blanks. It is often employed to produce gear blanks, ring blanks, and more. There are three types of upsetting, completely upsetting, end upsetting, and middle upsetting. Each type is used based on the specific characteristics of the forgings and the desired outcome. Punching involves creating holes in the billet by either rushing through the material or creating unthreaded holes. Bending is performed to shape the forging using specialized tools or molds. Cutting divides the billet into sections or removes a small area from one end. Mismatching refers to moving part of the billet a certain distance while keeping the axes parallel. This technique is commonly used in forging crankshaft parts. Like any manufacturing process, open die forging can experience defects. Some common defects include cracks, which can occur due to poor billet quality, insufficient heating, low forging temperature, improper cooling methods, or inappropriate forging techniques. Other defects include depressed deformations on ends and cracks along the axis. 
these issues need to be addressed to ensure the quality and reliability of the forgings. The Sani C-10 pump truck, renowned for its capabilities in the 30-meter class, has a range of advanced features designed for superior performance in concrete pumping operations. The truck is equipped with a five-section boom that employs an RZ-type unfolding mechanism, providing exceptional maneuverability and a broader concrete distribution area. This versatility ensures that the pump truck can deliver concrete to the most challenging locations, even in complex postures, thanks to its 360-degree rotational capability in both positive and negative directions while horizontal. A key aspect of the C-10 is its enhanced stability and safety, achieved through advanced design and engineering. The boom maintains an in-house amplitude control within 200 millimeters, reducing the impact on key parts by over 30%, thus ensuring reliability and longevity. The pump truck's X-type outriggers offer robust support with a minimized footprint, making it ideal for constrained workspaces without compromising stability. The pump truck's electrical control system is designed for ease of use and flexibility. It features a dual-frequency remote controller with a range of up to 1 km and a battery life exceeding 10 hours. The system supports multiple languages and allows for self-adjusting parameters, akin to high-end custom versions in the industry. Single-button arm locking prevents operational errors, enhancing safety. Additionally, the electrical system's IP66 grade protection ensures durability in harsh industrial environments. Performance optimization is a hallmark of the pump truck. Its gearbox and oil pump are engineered for various working conditions, such as continuous heavy load pumping. The synergy between SANI's special design controller and program optimization ensures efficient operation across all conditions, reducing fuel consumption by 8%. The truck's powerful delivery system includes a large diameter delivery cylinder and streamlined flow channels, improving suction rates and concrete delivery efficiency. The ability to move an additional drum of concrete per hour highlights its economic benefits. For maintenance and ease of operation, the pump truck incorporates several innovative features. The single-button high, low-pressure switch allows operators to adjust pressure quickly to prevent clogging when dealing with poor quality materials. The lubrication-free axles and the quick-change piston technology further reduce maintenance time and costs, making the truck highly efficient and reliable in the field. The driver's experience is also prioritized with ergonomic features such as four-point floating suspension seats and a large, unobstructed view from the cab. The integrated main control screens and oversized sleeper cabin enhance comfort and operational ease, particularly during long shifts or when waiting for concrete. <laughs>